From uh, Brexit to North Koreans abandoning their state, quite a lot of events here in the UK are grabbing the attention of Koreans. Of course, uh, telling those stories are us reporters and journalists. Live in the studio is BBC's investigative journalist John Sweeney. John, welcome to the program. Hello, John. Now, uh, let's pick up where our Park Ji Won left off Brexit. Um, what's the overall sentiment amongst the British people regarding their vote? Their decision to leave the European Union. Well, it's chaotic because nobody. Uh, the Prime Minister has said, uh, Theresa May has said, Brexit means Brexit. But what kind of Brexit does that mean? Um, it's difficult. It's difficult to work out uh, what it means. Fundamentally, um, uh, there is um, there is clearly a problem. People are worried about immigration. Um, but this was a, a, a referendum on the Britain's membership of the European Union. But many, many, many people said that they voted because they were fed up with immigration. Now, there's a problem in that because in the global world, immigration happens. Second problem is actually, if you, we still want to be in the single market, then we've got to have free movement of labour, and that means more people from abroad. But the other problem, which is something the political elite haven't got right, is that too many ordinary Brits are worried about immigration, and this is a big message. Now, how we relate to our European partners, that's way above my pay grade. But for the moment, it's, it, it, I mean, it's not chaos out there. It's, it's, it's London. It's organized and uh, polite, mainly. But, it's, um, but we don't know what the future holds. Right, and I think it's that uncertainty that worries many people. Um, so immigration may be uh, one of the you know, top concerns amongst Brits. Uh, however, over in Korea, it's uh, mostly about trade because now that uh, Britain has decided to exit the EU, the Korea EU uh, bilateral free trade will no longer be effective for the UK. And there are concerns that negotiations must begin to create another bilateral FTA between South Korea and the U United Kingdom. Oh, so the political problem is simple. Both the French and the Germans, the two key players in Europe, have elections later next year. And so uh, the smart people in Whitehall say it would be silly for, for Theresa May to start negotiating with, for example, President Hollande of France if he's going to be kicked out uh, in the autumn. And he's not going to give Britain a nice deal because he's, 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 he's facing an, uh, 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 an important election. So the smart people say better wait until the end of the year when you've got new leaders perhaps in France and Germany or you know, we know who those leaders are. So there are lots of internal um, pressures. Uh, to go slowly, and that is the mood music from Whitehall. They're not articulating that, but it hasn't happened yet. Um, uh, hey, I'm not the Prime Minister. I'm not, uh, uh, a fact for which I'm very grateful, as is a lot of people. <laughs> well, uh, John, so trade. Um, trade seems to be, at least in the minds of um, Liam Fox today. Liam Fox today talked about um, the free trade markets, and he actually made a comparison here. In 1945, both North and South Korea began from a very similar base, but while South Korea opened up um, its open economy, Economy and trade, uh, North Korea did not, and look where it is right now. Which brings me to your specialty, North Korea. I want to talk about your uh, coverages regarding North Korea. You were inside the Hermit Kingdom reporting. Um, tell us about that experience. Well, I, hey, um, uh, journalists aren't really welcome in North Korea, and if you go in, you're treated um, um, as Not if... Not nicely. Well, you, you're treated as if you're some a bacteriological toxin <laughs> uh, with kid gloves, white gloves, and kept in an antiseptic environment. So I didn't report... I, I pretended to be a professor, okay. uh, frankly, with an alcohol problem, and at one moment our North Korean guides, and remember the guides report to, and, or maybe are members of the secret police, called me professor of drinking, uh, which, which, was, which meant my cover was working. But essentially, I, I've been to lots of bad places, and North Korea is at peace. But it's a very, very dark state. The, the sense of this whole nation being told an enormous stinking lie that they have nothing to envy, that their life is better than, uh, than, um, than the lives of uh, people in the south of Korea, 
um, than in the West. It's, it, it's a complete fabrication. And there were, there were some moments, I mean, we went to a university, there were no students. We went to a farm, there were no animals. We went to a library, there were no books, at least no books worth reading. I mean, endlessly, there was, it, it was like being inside um, a, a, the set of a science fiction movie. And, and every now and then I wanted to sort of press, the, oh, look, that wobble. <laughs> this, we're in London, folks, okay, the yeah. wall wobbled, but never mind, it's plastic. But the, um, in North Korea, you really felt it was, uh, it was in a set, but as well as the comedy of that. I mean, for example, there was a moment they took us to a waterfall, and just before we went to the waterfall, we had to wait. And, and, and I said to the guide, and, and uh, one of the guys cracked up about this, uh, laughed, was I said, we've got to wait because they're switching the waterfall on. on. So there's a sense that they know, some of the, some of the people you uh, interact with, that they know that um, uh, it's silly. But nuclear weapons, they've got nuclear weapons, and now the, their rockets are getting uh, better and better. They can mm -hmm. certainly hit Seoul. They're now going over the waste of Japan onto the other side of Japan into the Pacific. And it's scary because um, uh, Kim Jong-un is clearly uh, unstable, deranged, uh, and, um, and his people are starving. None of that is good. None of that feels safe for the world. Now, um, because of time restrictions, I'm going to ask you this question, and hopefully your answer will be nice and brief. Um, so. I'd like to know what the, how aware the British public are about North Korea, the kind of danger it poses, and the UNSC action vis-a-vis uh, -vis North Korea. Um, he's a big fat joke, Kim Jong-un, and, and most uh, British people know that. They don't like tyrants. They don't like dictators. Remember, two world wars that we fought against dictatorship. So. We don't like dictators. We don't like people who don't have a sense of humor, who are bossy and nasty. So um, everybody has a, not a, a, um, a deep understanding, but a, a pretty good, simple understanding that South Korea is a place that you can go shopping, there are elections, that, that, that life is good, and North Korea is a hellhole. Well, uh, we'll leave it at that. Uh, John Sweeney, BBC investigative journalist for BBC, thanks so much for being on air with us today. Pleasure.